So good morning, everyone. I will briefly guide you through the geological evolution of Rima Boda, a tale of craters, pyroclastics, and volcanism. So, so far in the conference, we heard lots of interesting talks uh, targeted the South Pol Southern Polar Region as a mission, but I would uh, also favor to target Rima Boda as a landing site course. In this area, we simple said we can kill multiple birds with just one stone there, because we have access to material from Crater Copernicus. We could also try to probe material from Crater Eratosthenes. And we have also access to material from Imbrium Basin. So we could test multiple points on the lunar chronology function, especially that would be very important if we get more data points located on the upper part of the lunar chronology function so that we have a more robust age for the younger part of that function. So the orange box marks my study region. So it is uh, wedged between sinus estium on the western side, Maro Vaporum at the eastern side. And at the bottom, you can see uh, sinus medii. So let's have a closer look here. We see the study area. We are located on the southern rim of uh, Imbrium Basin, looking down towards uh, south. So as you can see, oh, there. Here we have the rim of Imbrium Basin. This crater over here is Eratosthenes. And we are basically looking down from the proximal ejector of Imbrium Basin towards south. Here we have um, Crater Trisnecka and the Crater Palace over here. So uh, to display this, we use the Lola Kaguya merged uh, DEM to create a triangular network to display the elevation data a bit better and to get a better feel of how the area looks topographically. And this um, map over here is uh, five times vertically exaggerated. So to display a bit better the deeper trenches that you see here in the southern part of the uh, image. And you can also see better the ejector of Eratosthenes uh, next to it. So then we overlay this data with the DEM data again, colored it. And now you also see the deeper parts of Marvaporum in the western part of the image and also Sinus Estium in the eastern part of the image. And you also notice that we have the highlands, um, the Montes Aponinus unit that is also located at the southern margin of the image. And you, ah, you can barely see it. Some uh, uh, Rima hygienius here. And you also see the high standing terrain over here. So we used also different data sets to correlate mineral features with uh, topographic data. Here, for example, here you see the Clementine coloration composite. We use this data set also to have a closer look at the pyroclastic material. For example, we have here in this darkish blue color and also here this darkish blue color at the southwestern area. These are pyroclastic deposits that are similar to the ones found at the Apollo 17 landing sites. And we have also pyroclastics located over here, close to Rima Bode. And it's barely visible, but over here at the eastern part of the image in Marvaporum, there are also pyroclastics located. We used also um, iron and titanium maps uh, from Clementine, but also different mineralogic products uh, derived from Kaguya data sets. And I will now guide you briefly through all of the geological units I mapped out so far. So we start at the oldest parts. We have some Nectarian craters 
found in our study area that are not as much affected by the formation of Imbrium Basin. We also found some Nectarian Terra. For the interesting one is the one that you see south um, west from Greater Eratosthenes. Cause on this uh, Terra we identified a crater chain that is pointing towards Greater Copernicus. Also a crater chain that is pointing towards um, Crater Eratosthenes. And in this image, it's barely sealable, but there's also a linear feature that is pointing in that direction back to uh, Imbrium Basin. Same goes for the stuff that is over here. There we can, could also identify linear, linear features that are pointing towards uh, Imbrium Basin. So the next geological unit is then all units related to the formation of Imbrium Basin. In the northern part of the image, you see some bluish units over here. This is the rim of Imbrium Basin. In light purple, labeled as IAP, is the Montes Apenninus unit. And then we subdivided the Framauer formation in a more hamoki part, that is the darker polar, uh, color labeled as I, IF, and also a smoother part of, Framauer, of the Framauer formation that is labeled as IIS. So after that, we investigated also the different units formed after the formation of Embryon Basin. So the oldest one is in this uh, set of units is the infill of uh, sinus estium and after that, we have uh, different types of pyroclastics. And for example, we have in the northern part, the unit IDPH, that is the more hamoki looking pyroclastic deposit that was in the Clementine CRC, more purplish colored. And then we have the pyroclastic units IDPS and IDPM. These two were more bluish colored in the CRC. And then we have uh, some younger Mara material, for example, this one over here labeled as, as IM2 is uh, presumably younger than the pyroclastic deposits because in the WEC image that we also investigated, you can see here at the margin of both pyroclastic units that the pyroclastic material is cut off and overlain by the slightly younger Mare deposit. Then we have also some uh, Mare deposits that are wedged in, like this one here labeled as IM3. This unit also overlain one, the pyroclastic material of unit IDPH. So in the Northern part of unit IM3, we investigated um, several craters that excavated the darker pyroclastic material that is covered by the lighter colored Mara material. So we also have some Eratosthenian units uh, in our study area, Name, most na uh, namely Crater Eratosthenes itself, the large one at the northern part of our study area. And we also differentiated the uh, Eratosthenian craters that we found in our study region into two uh, populations. The first one, EC labeled, is the older one. The younger one is EC1. That The younger one shows uh, signs of mass wasting and landsliding and the proximal ejecta of craters in the class EC1 is better traceable compared to the older craters in this darker greenish tone. So we also found some younger Mare units that are deposited on top of the older Imbrian flows. They are characterized by a darker albedo compared to the Mare material of the Imbrian units we found. They are also characterized by a stronger iron signal compared to the surrounding Mare material. 
And last but not least, we also have some Copernican units in this mapping area. You see at the western part the proximal ejecta of crater Copernicus it's, itself and also lots of crater chains and set, uh, secondaries of crater Copernicus. We also mapped the structural units, namely volcanic fissures, wrinkle ridges, and we used also gravity data to try to trace the rim of a pre-existing basin that is covered by material of Cenus estium. And with all of that set together, we have here the complete geological map of the study region, where it's also mapped out the complete ejecta of Crater Copernicus itself. And we have now a closer look on two of the units where we also counted craters. This is uh, IM2, the slightly younger one. And here we have IM4, the one that is located in Mare Vaporum. Both of the age are in, sim in a similar range that, of, that the age of uh, Hisinger et al. And to sum things up, a mission to Re Rima Bode where we can get samples from locations that we know that are ray material of crater Copernicus, this would improve the lunar chronology curve, a curve. We could get new insights into the timing of lunar volcanism. The region is also interesting for ISRU studies called if we can extract oxygen and mine iron and uh, titanium. And to sum things up, I'll leave the conclusion slide uh, over here and I'm open for questions. Thank you, Sasha, for the very nice work. Any question for Sasha? Hey, I have one in the meantime. So you, you said that there, there are like uh, impact craters that like uh, hitting some units. And I wonder whether you see um, some evidence in, um, uh, in the spectral maps that you used that some materials below these units are exhumed. So to infer the thickness of some of, of the marine filling of different events, if you could like yeah, it's something a, like that. Yeah, it's a good question. And for example, in, right, it's good that this slide is still up because for example, in this area here, there, when you will zoom in a, a bit on that, you would notice some spectral differences that the underlying paraclastic shines through and is visible into in the spectral data that would imply that the coverage of the Mara material for this unit is not really thick. The next step that we want to carry out is measure how thick the Mara material is. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, thank you, it's really interesting. Um, we have one question, yeah. Uh, Josh Gale, APL. So um, this is interesting in, in terms of you think so there's a buried basin uh, underneath the deposit. Have you considered taking a look at, at radar, particularly like P-band, because um, you could sense tens of meters under the surface, potentially? Yeah, the only data set that we looked so far in uh, is, uh, are some of the Grail gravity data. We saw that there's, there's a mass concentration underneath, um, inside uh, Sinus Estium. And we also used, um, we also had a look at older publications that also imply that there could be a basin underneath it. And also the, as if you remember from my, the Nectarian units, there was the one Terra unit at the south um, west of Eratosthenes. We use this one to identify other nectarian units along this a circle following this one to identify the basin. But the next step would you would be to have a more detailed look in gravity data from Grail. Yeah, I, I guess the radar would be somewhere in between there. So I mean, Grail, it's going to be a massive deposit. Maybe if it's not, you might want to check at the, the yeah. radar as well. Any other questions? I have just a quick curiosity. Um, 
did you already think about a possible landing location for or traverse yeah they are, i think so yeah they are i if i had to choose it's really difficult because there's three interesting landing locations one would be uh, inside uh unit im3 right on the in the northern part and another one would be close to one of the volcanic fissures there there's also a small mare unit close to one of the larger vents that would be interesting but I think the most promising one would be next to Crater Boda C, because there you have access to rain material from Crater Copernicus. You have access to material from Crater Eratosthenes. You can drive towards the pyroclastic deposits, sample these, and also have access to material from Crater Boda C. 